Most patients, let's, let's get this on the table first. Most patients who have Lyme get diagnosed with Lyme, get treated for Lyme, clear the infection quickly. Is that fair? Somebody comes in with the symptoms of infection, which has been associated with a Lyme disease diagnosis. They get antibiotics, most of them, they get better. Is that fair? It depends on the manifestation you're talking about. Okay. You know, you, if you're talking about erythema migraines, I think, I think everybody in the, on this panel would agree that if somebody comes in with an erythema migraines, you give them antibiotics for however long you decide you want to treat, two weeks, four weeks, whatever, most of those people will get better. The majority will, but in John Alcott's slice study, 39% at six months were still ill. Well, now, ill, I, what do you mean by and, ill? And, and he did not look at markers for activity of disease. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not saying by that statement that they were all inf still infected, but I would argue that given studies by Embers and Hodzik, et cetera, that there's persistence, there's evidence in the literature of persistence through the standard antimicrobials. The, the very first descriptions of Lyme disease being treated with antibiotics in the United States, because it was treated with, with penicillin in the 1950s in Sweden. But the first evidence of, of uh, antibiotic sensitivity from Alan Steer and, and Steve Maloista supported that, that a significant proportion, up to 50% of patients, were still symptomatic in some way as long as six months after their treatment. Right. But the question is how many of them are actually infected, and that's to be determined. Don't yes. we need then to go ahead? There were different studies. There were two that showed 28% had significant symptoms. One was 63%. And uh, so there's a variation of. Uh, you know, again, it, it gets back, back to the definition that people don't agree on. So there are, and I think there are some people that get infected and have a natural resistance to it. And they, even without treatment, they do okay. So Un it, Until they present with something else. And, and they may maybe carry it in a latent way for years, and then years later, it appears uh, after an auto accident or something when it was in their body. Something like chicken pox, where it comes up um, as shingles years later. So it, it's, and I think the co-infection is a complicated thing. It, it can be a, a complex interactive infection, not all of which we understand. Co-infections with, with other tick-borne pathogens or other non-tick-borne pathogens that, that might be in the body that are opportunistic, like viruses. All right, let, let, me, let me put it as clearly as I can, because I think we want to parse this out. If you have an initial diagnosis, and let's say we've made the diagnosis of a Borrelia infection, We'll call that Lyme, not the town. We'll call it the Borrelia infection. Well, it's Borrelia burgdorferi because there are other Borrelia. There, are the Bor there is Borreliosis, yes. Or anyway, Borrelia mites. It's not too them. complex. Right. Forget those. We're talking about the <laughs> not, Nobody can say that. Burgdorf. <laughs> then you treat antibiotics. And let's say, for the sake of argument, that this person then continues to have symptoms. Are a significant number of people continually infected? Or are these symptoms merely autoimmune manifestations of a previous infection, the infectious portion of which is now gone. Please, I, I, I have to disagree with you when you use the term autoimmune, because autoimmune implies... Oh, that's okay, an immune response, not autoimmune. Or an inflammatory reaction to... Inf or some to other non -inflammatory. Something else. Okay, let's, because let's, let me autoimmunity rephrase. is a very specific phenomenon. That's fine. And there's no evidence to suggest that patients with Lyme disease Are autoimmune. have autoimmunity based on prior... Okay, really let me effect. try this again. I told you this was going <laughs> to get interesting. If we talk about these ongoing symptoms after what should have been theoretically, perhaps not, an effective course of antibiotics, is it that there is active infection that is persistent, or is it that there is an inflammatory response? Is that fair? That is not related to active infection, but it is something related to the previous infection that's on And there's the a third potential yeah. phenomenon, and that is person has Lyme disease, person is treated, whether or not they still have active infection or debris is not the issue, but they have something else that is not related to Lyme disease. Okay. So as an example, there's a recent paper by, by Alan Steer's group at the Mass General where uh, patients with Lyme disease that's been treated and, and apparently cured have developed rheumatoid arthritis, have developed psoriatic arthritis, have developed uh, what's called seronegative spondyloarthropathies like, like ankylosing spondylitis. No evidence to suggest active infection and these people meet American College of Rheumatology criteria for those diagnoses, and they don't respond to antibiotics. 
But is that related to Lyme? Or, or well, people it's, get it's, these diseases? It's a and phenomenon. Don't have that's that's it's exactly my point. Comorbid condition. Let me go back to your immune issue. It seems like there's provocation to the immune system. Now, with a normal infection, yes, you get early inflammation, then adaptive immunity, and that's it, and then you're fine. So with this, what seems to happen is inflammation persists, there is an adaptive immunity, and there may be some autoimmune-type symptoms that persist in some people. But, why are, you, but why are you implicating autoimmune? Because you see some things, for instance, obsessive compulsive disorder, and you can see an abrupt onset that may follow two weeks after an infectious exposure. So that's, that's tissue and, and damage, and that's inflammation. There are any one of a number of, of potential explanations, but as well, an immunologist, I, I don't see how you, you necessarily implicate autoimmunity as being the underlying I, mechanism. I think it's less common than inflammatory mechanisms. Okay? But what evidence do you have that there is autoimmunity? Well, people have found antibodies, but the, the timing, it goes, for instance, two weeks after infection, where there's an abrupt increase and this most prominent with some of the uh, OCD cases, where there can be a sudden increase of symptoms that can correlate with when antibodies are produced. Well, that but, would suggest it. But okay? the correlation is not causation. Not for sure. But let me go back to the greater point that I wanted to make, is that it's more the immune provocation symptoms, whatever we call that, that are associated with, with the manifestations of the disease. And if the immune system's being provoked, something's provoking it. Now, it might be infection, it might be something else. It could and be debris from the organism. Although That's also been described. Yeah, but it seems like it's cleared rather quickly. Well, no, 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 I, I'm, I, must, I must disagree with you. Linda Bockenstedt and her group at Yale have demonstrated quite clearly that you take mice, you treat them with antibiotics, there's no live organism left, and yet there's debris that persists. Well, it's hard. Debris burdorferi derived debris, which is going to be a pro inflammatory nidus. I don't think it would last that long, and you see this persistent inflammatory reaction associated with symptoms. Now, it does seem like the people that have been adequately treated, they don't have disease progression, it's more static. They have the same symptoms they have, they don't keep getting worse. But there's this other group that keeps getting worse and worse with time. The symptoms they have get worse, they get new symptoms. The, the disease keeps expanding with time. And so therefore you're thinking something is provoking the immune system that's increasing over time. Well, what is it? Now, that, persistent that, that, infection is one of the possibilities. We can consider other possibilities too. But it's, that's what concerns.